Late morning, XRP Future Millionaire. <clears throat> it's 11.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Over the past few months, we've taken the show in a certain direction. In my opinion, I feel like it's getting a little stale. I feel like one forgotten thing over time, <clears throat> and excuse my voice, I've been in an event <clears throat> for the past four days and I'm all voiced out. Um... But I feel like one key thing that we've gotten away from, I've gotten away from, is talking about exactly XRP. I know I get into the charts. I know I do a lot of that. But sometimes it's good to recognize, it's good to evaluate, and it's good to transform. I also feel like I was too emotionally driven to where I lose focus. You know, I'm gets into that so slip back into the fourth dimension I'm seeing clearly this morning <clears throat> my emotions are in check so we can actually pay attention to what we need to do so first off if you want to trade like I do and join me on BitGet very easily so if you'd like to join me on BitGet <clears throat> in the video description in every single video you will not only find the partnered link there but you can see there's no VPN required. It explains it all. So the beauty of BitGet in the USA is you can trade XRP and you don't have to use a VPN. They have the certification through the United States government <clears throat> and also 50 other countries across the world so that you can trade without a VPN, including the United States of America. Yes, you can buy XRP and you can send it off the exchange if you would like. <clears throat> so that's a very cool thing. So if you want to join me on BitGet, Click that partner link and you can go through all the stuff. From today to August 20th, there's still 50 people. We'll get 20, 50, get 10. But that could, I don't know if that's fulfilled or not. But the important part of this until the 20th, if you want to join me on BitGet and you're going to do $1,000, take advantage of getting the free $100. Click my partner link, go over there. And I'm not doing this for affiliate chip. I'm a BitGet ambassador. So I don't, it does, my, I went out there and did an event. So, this is trying to help you guys. I want you guys to get the free money. I want you to take advantage of this. Why not get 10% back on what you put on the exchange? That gets a derivatives exchange. And also, to me, the biggest part is, is that you can't withdraw your money on there. So, you know, it takes a lot of that risk away from BitGet. So, you send it to your native exchange, and mine is Uphold, and then I just withdraw from there. I also have... Uh, cracking that I use so that I can withdraw so as far as being legit and being there you're not gonna have to worry about a lot they took out a 200 million dollar insurance policy <clears throat> in case of market instability so just a couple key facts about big that just so you would know they're also the number one copy trading platform in the world so if you're interested in copy trading which I don't suggest I would much rather you trade on your own but you can copy trade me see my ideas for when we long hold so, first things first, I want to talk about two coins, Ripple versus Bitcoin. Just the key facts, that's it. I'm not going to pull anything up, you know, I'm just going to, so, Bitcoin, as we all know, is decentralized. Well, that's one key difference from Ripple XRP. It's a centralized blockchain solution, so that banks can provide, you know, the digital assets, off of the exchanges and make it a little bit easier with the framework. Um, as you know, Bitcoin was founded in 2009. XRP was founded in 2012. Technically, the founder of XRP is Ryan Fugger. I know everybody talks about Judd McCaleb. And um, just, you guys know the whole thing. Brad Garlinghouse and yada, yada, yada. But we all know or think that Bitcoin was created by... Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, or Nakamoto, I think, and and this is a rough market cap right now. XRP is roughly a twenty billion dollar market cap compared to a three hundred billion dollar market cap for Bitcoin at the current moment. So that's that's a few things to you know kind of understand and pay attention to. But Bitcoin's market cap isn't even three hundred billion now. It's gone down. 
and XRP has gone down slightly from the 20 billion as well. So, but that's just an estimate. You know, you gotta you gotta take off a little bit now because of this recent downturn. Um, but that's just like the main things to understand between Bitcoin and XRP right off the bat. You know, the big difference, you're going from decentralized to centralized. So now that we covered that, a little bit of information of how we got to where we're at, let's look at the charts of XRP. As I've been saying, as you guys have been watching, we fell out of the bear flag. This is also known as a rising channel. It started coming off of a W reversal, a bearish one. So in order for this to be bullish, and this is the other thing, I've talked to everybody as if you're always listening on a daily basis. I need to understand that every single day new people come in, so I must address everybody so you guys understand what's going on. So, had this of W formation, and it's not necessarily done yet, we could just be consolidating. What you wanna see on this Dartley formation, which is a W, you want this left side, when it comes down, when it comes back around, you want a pull and then a break back up. So you always want the right side to be lower. That gives you a bullish W formation. This is bearish, which means when it comes up here, it reverses back down, which it did to the consolidation phase. Then it turned into another bearish W. Now it's, it's, it's likely going to fail. So more than likely, if this gets rejected here at the 20-day, it's already got rejected at the uptrending support, which is now confirmed as resistance. It tried to come back, failed. This rising channel, which is often known as a bear flag, and usually gets about a 75% retracement. And I had it targeted up at least maybe to a, uh, the most it could have did was 3801. But this is a bearish continuation pattern, an extended one now. But now it rejected here. Now if it gets the rejection on the 20 day, this could absolutely reverse down. This is why it's so key and why I'm on right now. So all you need to know right now, and this is the key facts for the moment. In order for this to become bullish, and forget what every other YouTuber is saying, the reason I started this channel was because I could not take the FUD anymore. I didn't know it was up, I didn't know it was down, and everybody was lying to me because they had no idea how to read a chart, and they're pushing an agenda, whether an affiliate chip or whatever the hell the case may be, or their 15 second ads they do at the beginning of videos, it's just annoying. So I started to realize everybody spoke the same narrative because nobody really knows what's going on. They just regurgitate things on YouTube. I don't, I don't care what they say. I'm gonna tell you what I think. And if you don't like that, all I can say to that is too damn bad. You might be in the wrong place. What I would suggest is for you to watch, have an open mind and understand that we're not in a bull market or in a bear market. If there's anything I can help you with, do not hesitate. I answer every single comment in the comments. I've gotten back to deleting all the spam in the comments, which can get hard. So I'm going to do my best to make this the easiest and the most entertaining, but at the same time, the most knowledge packed video that I can make it. So this is what we're watching. We fell out of a bear flag, a rising channel. I always say it's often a bear flag. You can even sometimes create an ascending triangle out of it. <clears throat> I chose to do the rising channel. We've getting rejected here at a very critical uptrending resistance. That was support all the way until we fell through. You really got to come back in here. Now we are showing another rejection and now a possible rejection here in the 30 minute time frame, <clears throat> right? And there's no volume on the EMA lines. So we're in a very tricky spot if we can't get back over. So that is what you need to know about XRP. I'm also going to go over Bitcoin because we talked about the what they are compared to each other. So Bitcoin, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. We're not going to look out into the longer time frames. We're simply going to focus on the chart at hand. Bitcoin, also, Bitcoin was in an ascending triangle formation in the short term. It's starting to tighten up. Well, now that it fell out, it generally will break down or up at about the 65, 70%, sometimes the 50%. But my thing is, is it had the continuation, it's come down, it's filed, come around, and now it's got it, it only needs one more rejection on the 20 day. So if it gets the rejection on the 20 day, it would come down here. Now for anybody who's new, these are the exponential moving averages. I only put them on so that I can get a consensus of what the uneducated trader will use. And that's not any disrespect because I was like that for a long time. 
It gives you an idea of where everybody's stacked up and where you could get buy orders. The problem with the EMA lines are they're a lagging indicator. So they're only going to do what the market's already done and it's going to show you after the move's already been made. Now there can be a continuation like now. You had an EMA cross right here. I'm going to show you a perfect example. Everybody would have probably bought this cross when it came down. So they would have bought on this way down. Then when it pumped up, everybody's like, holy crap, even if they bought here, they're getting scared, even though it's giving constant rejection on the 20 day. Until this 20 days broke, it's going to continue to be an overwhelming resistance line. So anybody who bought here, here, and got fluffed out, then bought again, got fluffed out again, and it just continues to happen until you have the parabolic move down or a huge spike in volume to break you up. But right now, we're just waiting for the J hook to finish. And if no volume comes in, this could be a temporary rejection point to get you another move and finish out this bearish continuation pattern, which in my estimates on this move down, had it have dropped here, could have got you down to here at 22,910. But now that it got rejected, tried to come back up and it's getting a rejection. If it gets rejected at the 20 day, it's going to make it even worse. So we have to pay attention to this. The only way to get back into this is if we come back into the ascending triangle and bust up over the 20 day and ultimately the 200 day in the short time moving averages, which is in the 30 minute time frame right now. So the blue line is the 200 day. Some people say 200 days. I think it sounds dumb. I, I like 200 day. Although it is 200 days put together. So I probably sound like an idiot, but that's just my thing. If you don't like it, you are welcome to walk out the door. You got the 100 day in the light blue. You've got the 50 day in the orange. And you've got the 20 day in the red. So even right now, for me, you would like to see a lineup like this. 200, 100, 50, 20. And have a little bit of room in between. We don't have that confluency yet, which leads me to believe we're not ready to break back up, even in the short term. Now, the one thing that can ruin this kind of synopsis is a spike of volume. A spike of volume can always make the direction change. Unfortunately, we're crashing in volume, and if we don't get a big spike in this 30-minute candle, it could be a very big problem. So just take into what I'm saying. I would really appreciate you hit that like button. Share me on social media so we can get more people in here. And let me know in the comments what you think about my style.